Hello. In a previous video, I, well, I have a couple videos, but uh, the one that's been getting an absolute ton of hits on YouTube is uh, primarily about low latency tweaks for Windows. Um, that's not entirely what I'm going to do for this video, though. Uh, but everyone's been arguing in the comments that, like, the 13th and 14th gen Intels have horrible latency and, and this and that. And um, if you kind of drill down, you find that people are talking mostly about, uh, like, latency spikes. Like, the you know, say they're playing, you're playing games, uh, the frame pacing will have some glitches in it and stutters. And pretty much everybody's just convinced that Intel is a big pile of crap. And uh, the 13th and 14th gen, n nobody's really quite sure whether or not it's the E-cores or the scheduler in Windows or uh, something, right? Or it's just the processors are pieces of crap. So since I made that video, that was a long time ago, uh, clearly there's been some uh, things that have happened, which is to say that Intel uh, was found to be... Uh, well, they screwed up their microcodes, so basically at idle clocks, the processors would amp up the voltage and essentially burn out the processors uh, over time. Well, we're not going to talk about that too much. I don't really think... Well, okay, I, I don't know for sure if that would cause latency spikes, but I do know for sure that on these latest Intel processors, if you are overclocking or... Um, your motherboard is doing things that you're not aware of. It's possible to crank the, it's the cache actually on the CPU up too high and you'll get, it's, it's a little bit hard to describe what it is, but it's like a cache, um, miss hit or something close to that. So you'll get like a stutter and like basically it, that's certainly something that you can't really fix. Um, it, it, but again, this is like it, Intel is really not come, uh, forthcoming about what's going on with this stuff. Well, anyways, today we have a system here. This is a new, as you can see, uh, Core Ultra 7 265K. And as I need to do uh, for my business, I have to test all types of process, everything, motherboards, processors, everything that comes out, figure out what's going on. Um, so had this in for a couple weeks and I uh, immediately tried a little overclock on it and it was immediately unstable. Like I'm talking about the boost clock is like five point, I want to say five gigahertz, maybe 5.4, but that's only on two cores and only for like little itty bitty brief moments of time. So here I have stuff pulled up on the screen here, but if we look here, we can see that uh, my processor is hitting something like 5.4, just under 5.5 gigahertz occasionally on a couple cores, it looks like, which is interesting. Um, but if you try and overclock that to say 5.5 or 5.6 entirely, it, uh, these are not stable. There's maybe something you could do in terms of voltages, but essentially... The uh, VRM on these uh, systems is actually located in the processor rather than the motherboard. That's um, not entirely the, <laughs> not entirely technically what's going on, but if, if for all intents and purposes, the processor actually regulates itself in terms of how much voltage it's getting, and the motherboard has less to do with it than before. So, essentially, what that all boils down to is these processors have built-in overclocking that's the boost clock and that's what you're going to get really if you try and get more than that you're not going to get much more i've heard that you can overclock the e cores which in the this latest generation are much 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 stronger than the older generations and you can get an appreciable performance boost um i'll just say this that i'm not a gamer and i don't care about games but i do audio stuff and i do care about low latency and so i'm very sensitive to glitches and um basically if my system's not running smoothly, I can tell very, very quickly uh, when I'm doing audio stuff. So I wanted to make this video talking about like, well, the new Intels. And then also, I think that we really need to talk about Windows 10 because, or sorry, 11. <laughs> Windows 10 is actually fairly reasonable compared to 11. 11 has so much stuff going on under the hood that it's really hard to track down all the various parts of what could cause latency. Um, one thing that could cause latency is the core isolation. This is in the Windows security crap. 
memory integrity. Um, turn that off. But essentially, uh, if you're running an actual beast workstation and you are a knowledgeable computer person, you should be running without any type of uh, safety nets, no parachutes. We don't want any antivirus. We want no core isolation. We want absolutely none of this garbage they're putting into this stuff here. So I have everything turned off. I have Windows 11 Professional. I go into GPE Edit and uh, manually in the uh, group policies, I turn off all this stuff. And that's really the only way you can actually accomplish that correctly, yeah, I should say. So no antivirus, none of this crap that is causing system overhead and very light and, uh, likely more latency. Now this latest generation of CPUs does in fact have much more memory latency. Uh, it's a chiplet based design. So there's some type of latency between uh, the different chiplets and the memory and things like that. So it's going to have just straight up more latency if you're doing like a memory latency test. But in terms of just using the system, it doesn't have more latency. In fact, this is actually quite a lot smoother in my opinion than my older, uh, see I had a 14700K and then before that a 13700K. And um, the 13700K blew itself out. Also, I was overclocking because at that point in time, I didn't know that Intel was screwing up their microcodes. So I, anyway, you know, things, but it was uh, unstable at stock settings. Now, another thing that's on the table here, and I'm not going to run this until the end of this video because I've already done it. And I saw in the comments, people were talking about latency mon, right? Latency monitor. And on both the 13700K and 14700K with Windows 11, uh, it would hard lock my system in like a very short amount of time, every time, no matter what. And I went back and forth. I actually talked to Intel and I did a, you know, their support stuff. I was going to do an RMA and then I just decided that it was worthless because uh, Intel was kept going round and round asking me to take, you know, do um, uh, like diagnostic tests and this and that. And like they just clearly don't know what the hell they're doing. So I'm not going to defend Intel on that. They're having a very hard time. And it just feels like basically they were trying to uh, boost the benchmarks to compete with AMD probably, and then they overshot it. And uh, well, and then, you know, this is what has happened. They're blowing out their own CPUs. But anyway, this latest generation should not have any of those effects. I haven't seen absolutely any um, stability problems on this system, and it actually has been much smoother overall for low latency tasks such as audio. Go figure, right? Um, anyway, I just wanted to have this stuff up on the screen. Um, and so let's go ahead and run latency mon. And, uh, when I first got the system, I ran latency mon and it hard locked the system in seconds, which is why I'm doing this at the end of the video. So I don't know, uh, since then two micro code, well, BIOS updates have come out. This is the last one was like maybe two or three days ago. Uh, I want to say it's like a 111. I don't know. You can look it up. But uh, I applied everything that's up to date on this system. Not overclocking. I have every, every possible thing turned off in Windows 11 that could screw things up. One other thing before I run this is just that uh, a bunch of these stupid tech tubers out there um, were talking about how the performance plans, sorry, hold on. Performance plans in Windows, like balanced and uh, performance, don't do anything. Uh, different, like you get the same performance basically, but there is actually a huge difference. And I'm going to show you what I'm, what I, uh, what, what, what we can find here. So we're going to run uh, resource monitor. And the reason for that is because if we go, so right now, let's see, what am I in? I'm in uh, balanced. Okay. Uh, resource monitor under the CPU settings or tab will show you parked CPUs cores. Parked means that they're actually turned off. And so we can see that we have CPU one, two, three, uh, well, anyway, parked for, and you know, these are going to turn on and off as things happen on the system. But the important thing to note is there's a latency hit uh, with parked cores that turn on and off. That's absolutely a thing, right? So anyway, balanced is going to park cores and guess what? High performance has no parked core. Well, seriously. I tested this last week and actually that was working. Ooh, wait. Okay, I think it's maybe just taking a second to update. But anyway, uh, so that, okay, good. That's working. 
<laughs> so you don't need to use like core park the utility you can just go in here and choose uh, high performance and that's going to unpark your cores and we're off to the races now um, in uh, also a previous video I had a bunch of tweaks in Windows for like ultimate low latency and one of those tweaks is to turn off the idle command that CPUs use idle basically allows the CPU to go into power saving so it's gonna de decrease its clock speed and voltages so the the tweak which by the way is from Microsoft itself uh, you do some registry entries and I'm gonna pull that up right now but I uh, the way I did that video was that it, you're supposed to create an ultimate performance plan, select it, and then apply the registry tweaks, which then only applies to this plan, the ultimate performance, meaning that you can then go and flip between balance, which goes right back to just the normal high performance, normal. But ultimate is the tweaked plan that has no idle state. And if, if I click that, you can see immediately over here in the task manager, all the CPU cores are now at 100%. And so they're not going to be able to shift their clock speeds. Um, and sorry. And uh, we can see over here in uh, hardware monitor that in fact, like basically the CPU is acting like it is under a full core load in terms of the clock speeds. But the more important thing about this is that the clocks are not shifting. That's the important thing. So yes it does in fact boost temperatures but under actual load okay so under idle the temperatures go up a lot but under load the temperatures are basically exactly the same as if you had just left your cpu maxed out on all cores with whatever the load is that's interesting but people are just freaking out about everything like oh god gonna nuke your cpu and then temperatures and blah 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 and it's just like look man i explained what i did it's easy to flip between the power plans. So like if you had a certain task that you wanted ultimate uh, low latency, then you might switch to the ultimate performance with the registry tweaks I did, something like that, or flip back and forth. It's not a big problem. You just have to understand what's going on here. And clearly, if you don't understand a lot about Windows, you shouldn't be doing this stuff in the first place. If you're having problems with your system, go find somebody that can tune it and you know do that. Or try and understand it. That's always a good thing too, but there's a lot to understand on these new systems. In any case, um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. So Intel does not, in fact, have higher latency. Jesus Christ. Is there, There's so many people that just have this idiotic idea that if they see some little, like, glitch in Windows, that somehow the CPU is, is broken. And there's a lot of nuance to this. Yes, there were some broken CPUs. No, I don't think that the latency was being affected by the broken CPUs. I'm fairly not, but if it was, then it's just a broken CPU. It's not that the entire architecture was completely screwed. But in any case, so here we have uh, some more data, a little bit more uh, data points for people to know what's going on. And uh, so the final thing is, let's see if I can lock the system up. Oh God, this always uh, upsets me greatly, but um, we're gonna run latency mon. And people have noticed, man, this, this program is locking up CPUs all over the place. Uh, apparently even AMD. I don't know I was reading that, but let's see. And by the way, just to mention this, I am using the uh, Core Ultra 7's Quick Sync, so the built-in graphics AV1 encoder. And I don't know if I've read anybody talking about that. So it's really cool. So right now I've got OBS... Um, only using the built-in graphics, the Intel graphics. I don't even have a monitor plugged into that port, by the way. Uh, so it's just sitting there naked, but you can tell OBS to use it to do encoding. So I'm encoding this video into AV1, which is freaking awesome. That's why there's a load on the GPU over here. Video, uh, it's not decoding, but I don't know, whatever, it's encoding. And then, you know, this is my main GPU, just the GTX 1080. And Wow, that's amazing. It looks like maybe the latest microcode fixed the lockup in latency mon, which makes me quite happy. But as you can see, I'm just unbalanced, which is arguably the worst performance you're going to get because we have core parking and other stuff like that. And I'm very, very, very okay with real-time audio and stuff like that. So interesting uh, stuff. And um, feel free to leave some comments. And if I think about them, I may do another video. Probably going to do a few more like Windows tweaks uh, video 
because Windows 11 is a big pile of shit. My God. Just so much happening in the background that people generally don't need, want, or any of that. It's just ridiculous. Microsoft, would you knock it off? Oh, my God. Anyway, talk to you on the next one.